Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I'm Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrives in Kathmandu to attend fourth BIMSTEC summit. Leaders of the member states call on the Nepalese president. One day special session of Kerala Assembly discusses post flood rehabilitation and reconstruction of infrastructure issues. Security forces gun down two terrorists in an encounter in North Kashmir's Bandipura district. Operation continues. Special CBI court sends RJD chief Lalu Prasad Yadav to jail after expiry of interim bail. In Asian Games, Indian track and field athletes to compete in six medal events today, men's hockey team to play Malaysia in the semi-finals. And in cricket, India to take on England in the fourth test match at Southampton today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and leaders of the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation, BIMSTEC, jointly called on President of Nepal, Bidya Devi Bhandari, in Kathmandu a short while ago. The BIMSTEC leaders also attended the luncheon hosted by President Bhandari. Prime Minister Modi reached Kathmandu this morning to participate in the fourth BIMSTEC summit. He was received at the airport by the Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister of Nepal, Ishwar Pokharel. The Prime Minister was accorded Guard of Honour and ceremonial reception at the airport. Mr. Modi will address the inaugural session in the evening. On the sidelines of the summit, PM Modi will have bilateral meetings with the President of Sri Lanka, Maithripala Sirisena, and the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina. He will also attend a banquet and cultural program hosted by the Prime Minister of Nepal, K.P. Sharma Oli, in honor of BIMSTEC leaders. More from a Kathmandu correspondent. The leaders of Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation, BIMSTEC, will deliberate upon 14 identified areas of cooperation. The main focus will be on the connectivity, trade, tourism, energy and agriculture. Combating terrorism and transnational crimes is also likely to be discussed during the summit. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed confidence that summit will chart the course for building a peaceful and prosperous Bay of Bengal region and will further consolidate the progress made so far under the BIMSTEC. Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has expressed hope that August gathering of BIMSTEC leaders will give a collective impetus to achieving peace, sustainable development and prosperity in the region. Rajkumar, AIR News, Kathmandu. Ambassador Mr. Manjeev Singh Puri, talking to media, highlighted the importance of the summit for India. BIMSTEC is a very important regional organization for India. This organization is connected with our neighborhood first and act east policy. That's why it is very important for us. हिमालया से लेके बे ऑफ बंगाल हमारे नॉर्थ ईस्ट रीजन जो है वो सब जो है साउथ एशिया के स्टेट्स और साउथ ईस्ट एशिया के स्टेट्स को जोड़ता है इन केरला अ स्पेशल सेशन ऑफ द स्टेट असेंबली वाज कन्वीन्ड टुडे टू डिस्कस द रिहैबिलिटेशन ऑफ विक्टिम्स एंड रिकंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन द आफ्टरमार्थ ऑफ द फ्लड्स द सेशन बिगन विद अ होमेज टू दोस हु लॉस्ट देयर लाइव्स इन द फ्लड्स आवर कोरिस्पोंडेंट हैज फाइल्ड दिस रिपोर्ट Speaking on the occasion, Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan said it is the greatest disaster that the state has ever witnessed in a century. Mr. Pinarayi Vijayan added that though the rehabilitation and reconstruction challenges were huge, the second phase of the rehabilitation mission is progressing successfully. He said rehabilitation is not possible in areas prone to landslides and floods. Tourism sector also was severely affected by the flood. As per reports, the losses amounts to more than the annual outlay of the state. So far, 483 people have lost their lives, 14 were reported missing and 140 were hospitalized due to injuries. As many as 14 lakh people had to take shelter in camps. 5,700 hectares of land were submerged in water. About 59,000 people are still housed at 300 relief camps. Shamila, AAR News, Tiruvannadavaram. In Jammu and Kashmir, two terrorists were killed in a counter-terrorist operation at Para Mohalla Hajin area of North Kashmir's Bandipura district today. Security sources said that cordon and search operation was launched following specific information about the presence of terrorists in the area. As the forces reached the suspected spot, the hiding terrorists opened gunfire indiscriminately, triggering an encounter. Sources said the search operation is underway to look for more terrorists in the area. IG JNK Police Mr. S.P. Panni gave the details of the encounter. 
जिन पे एक ऑपरेशन लॉन्च किया गया था जिसमें आर्मी सीआरपीएफ और पुलिस मौजूद है और इस एनकाउंटर का जो अभी हमें डिटेल्स मिला है उसके तहत दो टेररिस्ट मारे गए हैं और उनके पास से जो हथियार और बाकी चीजें जो है बरामद की गई है In Jammu and Kashmir the National Investigation Agency NIA has arrested the second son of United Jihad Council and Hizbul Mujahideen chief Syed Salahuddin after raiding his residence in Srinagar early this morning NIA sleuths raided the residence of Syed Shakil Ahmed at Rambagh area of uptown Srinagar and arrested him after conducting thorough searches of his residence NIA has not divulged any information about any seizure from the house. President Ram Nath Kovind today said that goods and services tax GST was the most comprehensive tax reform the nation has seen. Addressing the 68th batch of IRS customs and central excise probationers at Rashtrapati Bhavan today, President said it was a matter of satisfaction that the GST regime has been implemented successfully in ushering in a progressive tax structure that will benefit the economy and the honest taxpayers. The President urged probationers to ensure that the GST reform was implemented across the nation. Mr. Kovind said a nation's tax structure should be just efficient honest and equitable and as administrators it is the primary duty of irs officers to ensure that the country has tax resources to fund different aspects of development environment minister dr harshvardhan today released national reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation red plus strategy to achieve climate change mitigation by promoting forest conservation Speaking on the occasion, Dr. Vardhan said, India is committed to Paris Agreement on Climate Change. In its nationally determined contribution to Paris Agreement, India has communicated to the capture of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon dioxide through additional efforts. The minister said, India's National Red Plus strategy is one of the tools to further supplement India's commitment to Paris Agreement. Mr Vardhan said India is committed to make the world a better place to live earlier the minister witnessed signing of MOU between the department of biotechnology and international energy agency this is all india radio giving you the news for quick news updates around the clock follow us on twitter at air news alerts Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today said India is expected to surpass Britain next year to become world's fifth largest economy. He said in New Delhi that India will be the fifth largest economy as this year in terms of size India has overtaken France and next year it is likely to overtake Britain. Mr Jaitley said India has the potential to be among top 3 economies of the world in the next 10 to 20 years. The finance minister said other economies in the world are growing at much lesser rate. Union minister Nitin Gadkari has assured that the ports will not be privatized and that they will remain in government hands. He was addressing a function in Mumbai this morning. He expected that JNPT SEZ will provide employment to 1.5 lakh people in next few years. He had also informed that 3 lakh work orders have already been issued under Sagar Mala program and that investment of rupees 16 lakh crore is expected for the same. The agreement of settlement to provide 10.6% wage hike to at least 32,000 workers and 1 lakh pensioners in 12 major ports was signed on the occasion in the presence of Mr. Nitin Gadkari, Port Officials and Workers Federation. In Mizoram the Jan Oshadi Kendras are becoming popular as generic medicines are sold at cheap rates the outlets are drawing more and more buyers here is a ground report from our Aizol correspondent In Mizoram the Pradhan Mantri Jan Oshadi scheme was started in 2015 with an aim to make quality medicine available at affordable prices for all the state government is currently running eight Jan Oshadi outlets spreading in five districts Aizol Lungle Kolasip Mamit and Setsip district The sale in these outlets has also picked up. Talking to AIR News an outpatient of Aizol Civil Hospital Mr. Lal Dika said he has been buying his medicines from the generic drug store at a price 80% lesser than the outside drug stores. Damdoy Mansom I am a diabetic. I have to take lifetime medicines. Truly the introduction of medicines at affordable prices is life saving for a common man like me. Borwellin Kanlethaya 
Another patient, Mrs. Felke, we met at the Jan of Shadi Kendra, expressed her content with the store, providing medicines at very less price. She said, Pain and Sira, Dr. In. I have just returned from the OPD of Civil Hospital. The doctor advised me to come to this generic drug store. I am so grateful for getting all the medicines he prescribed at such a low cost. The state government has planned to open more such medicine stores across the state to give benefits to the common people. Irene Aya News, Aizol. Director General Indian Council of Agriculture and Research, ICAR, Trilochan Mahapatra has said that the workforce in agricultural community will reduce by 35% by 2030 due to better revenues in other sectors. He said that it is high time that some innovative approach is brought in to motivate and attract youth to agriculture sector. He was inaugurating a meeting of experts from the fields of agriculture and its science in New Delhi today. National Disaster Response Force has trained almost 70 lakh beneficiaries as a part of their capacity building program to deal with any kind of disaster. In an exclusive interview to All India Radio, DG NDRF Sanjay Kumar said, post-disaster the reconstruction should be on a build back better basis to avoid any kind of eventuality in future. Tune into the FM Gold channel of AIR at 9.30 p.m. tonight to listen to the interview. In cricket, India will take on England in the fourth test match of the five-match series at Southampton today. The match will begin at 3.30 p.m. Indian time. Indian skipper Virat Kohli informed that R. Ashwin has recovered from his hip injury and is fit to play the match. Kohli also hinted that he would field an unchanged side today. England is leading five-match series by 2-1. And now, news from the 18th Asian Games being held in Indonesia. Indian track and field athletes will look to continue their superb run at the Games today when they compete in six medal events. Men's 800m gold and silver medalists Manjeet Singh and Jinsen Johnson will vie for top honours in the 1500m final with Chitra Unnikrishnan and Monica Chaudhary figuring in the women's section. Lakshman and Govindan will aim for gold in the men's 5000m final. India will also be in action in the men's and women's 4 into 400m relay finals. Besides, all eyes will be on discus thrower Seema Punia, who along with Sandeep Kumari will be looking to make the country proud. Of the total 54 medals bagged so far, India has won the most in athletics, that is 14, 5 gold and 9 silver. In the last edition of the Games in 2014, the athletes had won 13 medals, that included just 2 gold. Meanwhile, in men's hockey, India will clash with Malaysia in the semi-finals this afternoon. All India Radio will broadcast live commentary on the match from 3.55pm onwards. The singles event in table tennis are also being held today. Moma Das has crashed out in the opening round. Manika Batra and Achanta Sharat Kamal are yet to begin their campaigns. India currently has 11 goals, 20 silver and 23 bronze in its kitty and it continues to be 9th in the table. China maintains its massive lead at the top with Japan 2nd and South Korea 3rd. Sabi Hasan Khan, AIR News. At the stock markets after opening higher today, the Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange slipped 94 points to trade at 38,629 in the afternoon session a short while ago. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange fell 35 points to 11,657. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrives in Kathmandu to attend 4th BIMSTEC Summit. Leaders of the member states call on the Nepalese president. One day special session of Kerala Assembly discusses post-flood rehabilitation and reconstruction of infrastructure issues. Security forces gun down two terrorists in an encounter in North Kashmir's Bandipura district. Operation continues. Special CBI court sends RJD chief Lalu Prasad Yadav to jail after expiry of interim bail. In Asian Games, Indian track and field athletes to compete in six medal events today. Men's hockey team to play Malaysia in the semi-finals. And in cricket, India to take on England in the fourth test match at Southampton today. And with that, we end the midday news.